Hi, my name is Trevor Townsend, and I'm CEO and co-founder of Matter Inform. In this video, I'm going to take you from setting up your scanner to getting good scans to exporting your finished model. Let's get started. Put the scanner on a flat, stable surface and plug in the power and USB cables. Press the button on top to open the scan bed. Make sure to unfold the arm for the bed to rest on. Press the MF button to power on the scanner. The scanner software is called MF Studio. Download it from matterinform.net slash download. This is MF Studio. Let's start by calibrating. Choose whether you have a card or a box, then place the calibration device you have on the scan bed. Place the card on the center of the bed. If you have a calibration box, place it so that the checkboard lines up to the center of the bed. Press the Calibrate button. This is step one and takes about a minute. Now it's step two. Move the card or box forward about a centimeter, just like this. Press Continue and the calibration will go for about another two or three minutes. The calibration will finish with a message of success. OK, let's start scanning. Press the New Project button, give it a name, and then press Save. The most important thing to know about getting a good scan is how to set your laser detection. We'll start by identifying what good laser detection and bad laser detection look like. Press the New Scan button, and let's take a look at this duck. Starting with bad laser detection, the green line is broken and flickering. This is good laser detection. The green line is solid and unbroken. Now this bust figure. Starting with bad, the line is broken and flickering. This is good, the line is solid. One more example, this heart sculpture. Bad and good. There are two things you need to know to get good laser detection. The first is setting the camera exposure. Under geometry settings, move the slider and watch the laser line. When the line is good, that is a good camera exposure. Different colors of objects will need different camera exposure settings. Move the slider until you have the best laser line possible. This brings us to the second thing you need to know to get good laser detection which is how to control the light around the scanner. Sometimes you can't get a good laser line no matter where you put the camera exposure slider. When this happens, it usually means there is too much light. If this happens to you, try to turn the scanner away from light sources or try blocking the light with something. Let's see that again. The laser line only covers half the duct because the room is extremely bright. When we move the folder to block the window, the laser line completes. Now we'll get a good scan. Some things can't be scanned as they are. Things like a glass of water or a cell phone won't scan because the laser doesn't show up on them in a way that can be read by the software. The glass of water is translucent and the cell phone is reflective and dark. To scan things like these, you have to coat them with light gray or white powder or paint. Let's do our first scan. We'll start with the duck placed in the center of the scan bed. The inset image shows the camera exposure for capturing texture. This is the color that will be applied to the scanned object. Move the slider under texture settings until the image shows the object's color appropriately. Now we'll set the geometry setting exposure for good laser detection. If you don't want to capture color, like for example if you intend to 3D print, you can turn off color capture. That will hide the inset image and will also shorten the scan time. You have control over where the scan head moves. Drag this vertical slider to select the head positions. You can move the bottom of the vertical slider as well, so you can start your scan at a higher head position. The first slider position is the head at the bottom, and each higher position moves the head up about 35 millimeters. 
The duck is small, so I only need to scan at the first position. Use this horizontal slider to control how much the scan bed will turn. If you only want to do part of the object, you can set that. I'm going to do a full 360. Press scan and let's see how this looks. The point cloud will start to form in the viewer and you can move it and zoom in and out with your mouse. I'll speed up the video for the rest of the 65 second scan time. Okay, here's our completed first scan. It looks great, but you'll notice that there isn't any point cloud data on the top or on the bottom. That's because the laser can't actually touch those areas when the duck is sitting on its base. To get the top and bottom, we'll need to do several scans with the duck in different positions on the scan bed. The scanner will capture what the camera can see the laser touching. This is part of the fun of 3D scanning, figuring out the right way to capture your object. To completely capture the duck, I'll make three scans. The first was of the duck sitting on its base in the middle of the scan bed. For the second, I positioned the duck on its right front side, just to the right of the center of the scan bed. For the third scan, I rested the duck on its front left side and placed it just to the left of the center of the scan bed. These three positions gave me complete coverage of the duck, but they are not the only ones that would work. You'll learn a lot by experimenting with this, and with quick scan, you'll know in seconds if the scan is capturing the area you want. After capture, clean your scans before combining and meshing them. This slider crops your scan from above. The selected points are red. This slider crops from the bottom. This slider crops in a circle from the edges. Moving the slider changes the circle's diameter. Press the Clean button to remove the selected points. If you make a mistake, just press Ctrl-Z to undo. The brush tool lets you paint the points you want to remove. To change the brush size, use the square bracket keys on your keyboard. Now that we have three clean scans, let's combine them. I'll pick the scan with the duck positioned on its base to be the first scan to align. To begin the alignment, I click the A button. This scan is now the one that the others will be aligned to and will be the final orientation of the model. You can tell it's aligned because it has this orange box drawn around it. Next, I'll make the left side scan visible and click the A button to align it. MF Studio will examine this scan and the first one to find the areas that are the same. This is the key to combining scans. They have to share areas that are the same so MF Studio will know how to fit them together. MF Studio finishes its calculations and now the two scans are aligned. You can see the duck has fewer holes and that the orange box in point cloud control surrounds both scans. Finally, I'll make the right side scan visible and click the A button to align it to the first two scans. Okay, all three scans are aligned and the holes are filled. Remember, you can have a lot more scans than three, so you're free to experiment to get the best results. You can also unalign a scan simply by pressing the A button again. Now we have a great duck point cloud, so we'll go to the Mesh tab. Moving the slider to the left gives a smoother finish, and the right gives more surface detail. Level 8 is a good place to start, so I'll select that, then press the Mesh button. Meshing converts the point cloud into a watertight solid that can be exported for 3D printing and other purposes like VR, AR, or 3D modeling. Try different mesh levels to see if you prefer the results. Finally, don't forget to check out the Mesh Info panel to see the face count, surface area, and dimensions of your mesh. To export your scan, go to the File menu and select Export. For 3D printing, choose the STL file type. Give your scan a file name and press save. Let's recap the most important points. Good laser detection is the most important part of getting a good scan. Move the geometry setting slider until you get a good laser detection line. If you're having trouble getting a good laser line, try blocking out some light. If you're intending to 3D print your scan, you can turn off texture capture. Shiny objects need to be coated with powder or paint. You'll usually need several scans to fully capture your object. Place the object in different positions on the scan bed to capture different areas. Clean away points that aren't part of the object before you combine your scans together. 
experiment with the mesh level until the meshed result best represents your object. To export for 3D printing, choose the STL file type. Store and share your scans for free on bevelpix.com. Sign up for an account and upload your scans directly from MF Studio. We offer live web tutorials where we'll show you how to get the most out of your scanner. Sign up for a tutorial at matterinform.net slash tutorial. If you have questions, get in touch at support at matterinform.net. Thanks for watching and happy scanning!